Hello everyone and welcome to the first Forgotten Heralds tutorial on Terra Rising. Uh, there have been a lot of questions about this game, uh, so I'm here to answer a few of them. Uh, like you can see, there's a whole bunch of uh, camera options. I tend to like to play it about right here. Um, so this is where you start off the game right after you finish customizing your character and watch a pretty brief um, introduction of the storyline. You're going to come talk to uh, this person right here and you're going to go down here and click. you got to make sure you talk to her enough. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and walk you through some things that are on the UI. So you press escape and you're able to move everything. The UI is completely customizable. Uh, you're able to move everything to where you want it. You can lock it down. You can add more things. It's pretty great. You can even do it with the chat bars. Reset chat tab position. It's pretty good. Um, so with that in mind, I play with a controller and you're able to play with a controller as well. It's pretty simple. Just plug it in, plug and play. Uh, Terror Rising is free to play. Uh, all the entire game, as far as I know, is free to play. Um, there is a monthly membership if you would like to have it. But right now I am not using it. So I'm going to go over some important things. Uh, when you do press escape, you'll see down here, this bar that I'm moving around right now, is uh, your actions bar. So you'll go to profile, it's got skills, quest log, inventory, map menu, activities menu, social menu, uh, Valkian outfitters, and systems menu. Now this is important because you need to learn the, uh, the hotkeys. And this will tell you right here, so it says profile, P, skills, K on and on. So you can use that and if you just created your account go ahead and go to Valkian Outfitters and go to item claim and over here on one use items or account items you'll have to click the tabs through there will be um, gifts from Terra one of them will be a mount you're gonna have to click it and claim it and then you're gonna have to go to your inventory which uh, the hotkey is I and you're gonna have to uh, activate them by right clicking on them and you'll get that mount by pressing K and going to writing skills after you've done it take this mount you see I've pulled it and you can put it anywhere you want on your toolbar there's plenty of toolbars um, so that's great so right away you can have a mount I don't have it on this character it's only for one character on a free to play so keep that in mind your first character if you claim it that's the character that's gonna have the 280 movement speed right now I have uh, the level 11 horse which is a 240 movement speed so quite a bit slower than the one that you can get from the gift from the game I have that on my other character this is my lowest level character uh, at level 11 as you can see this character is that's when you get the um, the mount mission that'll have you go to a place to get your first mount and that's the one that I have um, so as you play through the game there's a lot of things that you need to recognize uh, up at the top right, you'll see you've got a mini-map, which will show pretty important items. And then you've got your other map that I'm moving around right here. And it shows a more detailed uh, variation of that map and where to go and what to do. You'll see asterisks in red or question marks in red. Those are needed to do to complete uh, story-wide missions. Uh, you'll see this little thing. Looks like uh, a diamond with wings. That's the flight manager that'll get you from city to city, but you're not going to be able to do that until you've got the mission to leave this area. Uh, all in all, this is a pretty simple um, UI. Uh, it can take some getting used to because you're able to move everything around, and once you start joining PvP matches, then it starts to get a little confusing and you're going to need to take some time to really customize your UI. Um, other than that, the main thing that you need to recognize about this game is that the, in the skills menu you're going to continuously gain more skills but the only way to do that is going to your uh, perspective manager so this char uh, this character is a slayer so I need to go to a tactics manager so the game at this point will have you walk through here um, if you don't have a mount you're going to be walking it's going to be pretty slow and it's going to have you do some stuff in right next to this campfire um, campfires are going to restore your stamina which is important, you're going to need that. So uh, once you get here, it'll, you, you're able to 
activate certain different items. There'll be scrolls. I don't really have any in my inventory right now. I used them in the last raid. But you're able to do that, and it'll put buffs on your character, which is pretty great. They help out a lot. And a lot of the campfires, they look like this. You also have portable campfires that you can pick up and you can put on the ground when you're off your mount. So as you can see, I have a campfire right here. I can use that, but right now I'm right next to a, mount, or a campfire, so I don't need to do that. It's going to have you come around and you're going to get a mission to come kill some things. As you can see, there's things that drop on the ground. The loot actually drops on the ground itself. And you can walk up and you can grab it. So that's pretty cool. If it's not yours, it'll tell you it's not yours. And if you didn't kill the monster, you're not going to get it unless the person that did is gone and has been gone for a while. Then you're able to pick it up. Uh, so it's going to have you come down here and probably kill five of these and uh, pick up some loot and such, which is good. And it's going to have you keep walking down here towards this uh, shield with like a key in the middle. And this is where you're going to get your second skill in-game. And this is where things start to get a little better. So you've got the tactics instructor for everything that's non-magic based, magic instructor for everything that's non-tactics based, right? Pretty simple. So you go in here, you talk to it, you got to learn skills. And there's a very large amount of skills that you can learn in this game and upgrades to each skill. Uh, there's both active and passive, uh, which is good. And normally it's every two levels that you get another skill that you're able to use. Uh, but so right here I've got 12, 12, 12, 14, 16, 16, 18. So it generally goes by twos, which is pretty easy to remember. So every two levels, just come and talk to one of these guys and get yourself another skill. It does cost in-game money, uh, but that is very easy to come by. So don't worry too much about that. Um, once you do learn your secondary skill, that's where everything becomes more interesting with the combat styles. So when you go to K, which brings up your skill menu, you'll see down here at the bottom it says change skills. You click on that and it has trigger skill and change skill. So you're going to have multiple trigger skills after a certain amount of time that that number is going to grow. This, this character is a low level, so there's not many. But this is going to grow exponentially and you're going to have more and more things that you're able to skill into and skill out of, which is great. So you use your trigger skill and the premise of this is you chain into another skill. And if that skill also can be a trigger skill, then you can have that chain into another skill. So ultimately you can have quite a few skills that you chain directly into, but you need to use strategy while you're picking these out. So if you create this very, very long chain of close range like attacks, aggro abilities, things of that nature, um, you need to recognize that once in a while you should probably use backstep. Um, and understand that when you do use your trigger skill, it will push you directly into the next skill that you have connected to that trigger skill. So headlong and then knockdown strike is what I have right here. So if ever I do use headlong later on in a trigger skill, then it will move me directly into knockdown. doesn't matter what was supposed to come after. So keeping that in mind, if you have a bunch of close range attacks, um, you better be certain that you're going to kill whatever you're trying to kill within that chain. Otherwise, you're going to be looking down the, the barrel of hurt. Um, which can really, really do a number on you. So when you do die, you'll pop back up at a safe zone. And right here, this is a safe zone. Um, and you'll also pop up in like cities and such like that. Uh, you need to go find the nearest uh, rejuvenation character and talk to them and purchase full rejuvenation to get your HP, MP, and stamina all the way back up. Because with your stamina at zero, it makes things a lot harder. Uh, while you're fighting, you really need to pick up these rejuvenation motes. Uh, they're going to rejuvenate your health constantly. And it goes to a certain point in time, so that's it's not all-encompassing. So you're going to have to keep doing it. Uh, as you carry on, you're going to end up talking to this guy. This guy's going to want you to come kill one of these things over here and this is really your first actual pseudo boss that you fight and uh, he's relatively easy he drops a good amount of stuff so be sure to pick up the stuff that he does drop uh, you're gonna carry on through and get all the way up into the city and you'll get a bunch of new missions and stuff and it'll tell you on your mini map and also on your uh, more detailed mini map where to go and exactly what to do uh, if ever you do get confused you'll see over here is my quest tracker it says quest tracker right here. I'm moving it around right now. And it has a red question mark. That means that I've got to do this to storyline progress, right? Now, if you don't know what to do in this, you double click on it 
and it brings up your quest log and goes directly to that quest. You read through it, cool, I gotta do this, all right, so some graceful blooms, I gotta find those. And then I gotta take them to this blue underlied character. You double click on that and it'll show you on a bigger map exactly where they are located. So you're gonna have to get there to finish that mission, which is very good. Um, with other missions, like if you have to kill a few, uh, certain few things, whatever, um, their location will pop up directly right here on this mini map and there'll be orange dots and it'll show you where they normally spawn so you're able to go directly to where they spawn and there's no guessing anymore which is pretty damn cool um, that really makes things pretty easy uh, for continuing on with quest items and getting things that you need to get done um, as you progress later through the game you're going to be picking up little bitty items that are called let me get to the inventory I don't actually have any on this character right now, but you'll get um, these items that will be a part of a quest, and you have to pick up 16 of them or so, and you'll get a weapon that you're able to enchant, and that'll be the first thing that you're able to enchant. Uh, throughout the game, you also need to make sure you check in the activities menu and the enchantment area. When you look around, you need to check and see if anything's enchantable. So I've got a shirt on right here, and right underneath for level 11 or above, it says extractable, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it'll say enchantable underneath that. And whenever you have an enchantable piece of gear, you should probably go ahead and enchant it. Um, it really raises the, stat the stats and it gives you a lot of boosts, uh, a lot of bonuses through your combat, which is great. Um, you're gonna keep going up here and you're gonna do a bunch of different missions and through and through until you have to go to uh, Valkyrie, and I know I'm pronouncing that completely wrong, but that's just how I call it. So you go to your flight manager and you go through this like Pegasus portal ride, which is pretty cool, and um, you'll level and continue leveling until you reach the point where you can do a, uh, a raid or alert, and then you can queue for that here, instance matchmaking. Uh, you can find a group. I'm currently not available for any, and it'll, be, it'll appear right here it tells you what stuff you're able to receive after completing it. Click down here if you're able to lead the party and tell people how to play it. There's Battlegrounds, which becomes available at level 30, which is uh, 20v20 and uh, I think 3v3. So those are PvP matches. Uh, you're in the 20v20, you're automatically jumped to level 60. So everyone's on an equal playing ground. No one is uh, overpowered but you are still going to have the same amount of abilities that you had before. Um, over here in item claim, uh, actually not item claim, sorry, in your inbox, it'll tell you underneath here, like, hey, you've got uh, items pending, and you're only able to pick those up from the bank. Uh, so you have to go there and you have to pick them up from the bank, and it'll be pretty easy. It's called parcel post. You click on that and you're able to pick up the items that people send you. Um, really, that's uh, that's the basic guide in the beginning of how to uh, how to do well. If you guys have any questions or any concerns, any things that I did not bring up, please let me know. I'll be glad to help. And uh, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe below.